Here's a situation. You have a filterable spreadsheet. What you need is a way to count visible data based on multiple criteria, like a count ifs subtotal function would work if Excel had one. So let's take a look at this example. Here are my regions, here are my products, here are my amounts. What I'm interested in is getting a count for each group of products, but only for the dollar amounts of the greater than zero. In other words, I just want to count the debits. In this cell, I used Excel's count ifs function on fasteners, and it worked. But now if I come down here and I want to look at just New York and I filter out everything else, this doesn't change because it's evaluating the entire set whether it's visible or not. And that's not what I want because I just filtered out a bunch of things I didn't want to see. So since I'm looking at just New York, I want the results to be just for New York. So I need a way for this to work just on visible data. Excel has a group of uh, functions called subtotals that work just on visible data and that's going to be part of my solution. Here I have the subtotal number three function for count A, then I have offset row uh, minus minimum row strategy to mark visible or not visible rows and it's going to get force the formula to go down row by row marking each one as visible or not visible. One is going to be, it means it's visible, and zero means it's not visible. And that's going to be my first array. Here I am using the sum product function, which is going to take the results of the first array, multiply by the results of the second array, and multiply by the results of the third array. Now the second array is my first argument. I have the entire products list highlighted, and it's checking against um, what I have typed here in cell B7, which is fasteners. If this is a fastener, then it's going to return a true. If it's not a fastener, then it's going to return false, row by row. But I can't use words. I can't use a true in a formula or a false in a formula. I need numbers. So by using the double negative in front of it, it forces the trues to be ones and the falses to be zeros. My next array is looking at the dollar amounts. Are they greater than zero? One by one. True or false. So if we look at this first array and it is not visible, that means it would return a zero. So a zero times anything is a zero, so we don't, don't even need the rest of that. But if it is visible, it's going to put a one in memory. And it's going to come over here and let's just say that's a fastener. So I'll put a one in memory for that one. And let's just say this is greater than zero. It'll put a one in memory for that one. So we'll have one times one times one equals one and it's going to go down and do that for every row. Now I'm using the subtotal uh, count a function right here so it's just going to count my ones and that's how it comes up with the answer. So let's come back over here filter out for New York and just check this to make sure it's right. I'm looking for fasteners just the debit amounts, the positive amounts. Fasteners in New York should be three so let's see there's a hundred that's a positive amount that's a positive amount, that's a positive amount, that's right. Material, also three debits. One, two, three. Tools, two debits. One, two, ah, that's a credit. Don't count that one, and it didn't. So this is working right. Let me show you how I did that. And that is a way to solve this need.